As you have said, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Indeed. I was, uh, I had been doing most of the shows on, at all the studios, all the television shows, and I had done a show where I played a high wire walker, and uh, Irwin Allen saw that and said, I want that girl. Uh, so I came in to audition for him, and I wore big earrings, which he loved, and a pink suit. I mean, he just, oh, he, that's the one. And uh, so... That was it. He handpicked me, and I, I didn't. I didn't have to um, do any screen test. I mean, there were screen tests being made, but um, I, but I had done so much film that I was. You know, I pretty much was in a possession of, of being requested as the sort of the ingenue, and uh, so uh, he did. I didn't want to take the part right away because uh, although I loved science fiction. I was just beginning my career, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be pigeonholed, and, uh, but it turns out that it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Major West, about 50 years ago, I was with the General Artists Corporation as an agency, and they also represented Erwin Allen, who was the producer of Lost in Space and Voyage, etc. And uh, my agent said to me, uh, there's a pilot going called Lost in Space that Erwin's doing, would you like to do it? And I said, well, science fiction, this is before any science fiction shows were on. I said, I'm not interested in science fiction. No, I had done a Western series called Johnny Ringo. I did The Detectives, you know. Uh, and then I didn't have uh, science fiction. But he said, well, just do it. Nobody will ever see it. They're doing the pilot. Take, make a few bucks and forget about it. So I signed to do the pilot. And uh, I didn't test for it or anything. They just wanted me. And, I, and uh, it sold. And the agent that got me involved, he became a vice president over at 20th Century Fox that was producing it, so he had a good thing going. Of course, the episode I loved was uh, Attack of the Monster Plants because I was able to play Bad Judy. And uh, that's always fun to play bad. Uh, you can, you know, you, you, as an actor, you like to have the challenge of trying to find something in yourself that you mm. can connect to that is a little bit uh, off and so that was that was fun to do but I really enjoyed just just um, being a part of the part of the show I, I I couldn't believe my luck when I would drive in at six in the morning and no one else was on the freeway and I was at that time anyway and or it's very few people and I was driving into 20th Century Fox Studios and I was having uh, I was going to be in a show that was going to be a network television. I mean, my luck. And um, I'd come from an orphanage in Norway, adopted when I was five, uh, went to, lived in Michigan, then came out to California. My dad wanted to write a book on philosophy and took a sabbatical, and, and there I was. Uh, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's so strange, a turn of events of people's lives and and uh, I'm going to write a book about it actually so. uh, I like the antimatter man which is really featured guy more than it did me but that was good and I like my character in it it was a character that had a beard and a bad eye and he was a bad guy at two sides so Don West was good and bad in that one and that was kind of fun to do the antimatter man yeah I liked uh, I liked my Second year pistol, first year pistol also. I like wearing pistols because I had I done western, and I always had uh, a Colt 45 on my hip, yeah. so that felt comfortable. Yeah. Then I did the detectives and I had a 38 snub under here, yeah. so now I had a laser pistol. In fact, so I'm glad that, you know they gave me a holster for yeah, that. You kind of graduated up. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I ran out of guns. Yeah, after lost yeah. in space, what's the next? Yeah. yeah. Irwin Allen loved gadgets. He loved everything that blew up that could 
you know, the, uh, any guns, any water, any, you know, monsters, of course, gadgets. Well, of course, I love the chariot. And, of course, this guy, Bob May. Bob May was a... It, he was in the robot, of course. Most most everyone knows that now, and uh, he just really was devoted to being in there. And he had to memorize all the lines. Dick Tufeld, um, uh, uh, Bob, even though Bob had memorized the lines, Dick Tufeld uh, said said the words on on camera. And so, yeah. So we miss Bobby. He was uh, he was a real wonderful person, a real love, and uh, and Dick too. The yeah, Tufeld is, is gone as well. Well, we had a wonderful relationship. I did with everyone. Uh, Jonathan, I didn't get to know as well as I did Guy. Uh, Guy and I used to go to the horse races together and do a lot of things, hang out, you know, pretty much. Uh, and Jonathan, uh, we had a relationship on the show that was very, very good. And uh, so when I used to hang out with Guy in June and he heard dressing room a lot. We used to play word games and have fun so it, it was nice yeah and Billy Moomy is the one that I hung out with yeah. because like I say in my book Billy was 11 and acted like he was 28 I was 28 and acted like I was 11 yeah. so we were a good balance for each other you know Guy and June were the epitome of Hollywood you know I mean they he had been in Zorro and I was just so madly in love with him I thought oh my gosh I'm working with Zorro I wouldn't miss it every Sunday and uh, June, you know, was a legend already. And uh, Jonathan, Jonathan was a character actor that, uh, with whom I, I wasn't familiar until I, I started working with him. And then he started telling me all the shows he had done. And he had been a character actor on and guest star on, on many, many of the shows in Hollywood. And 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 then, of course, had been, he was a self-made man. He he had been a very poor kid uh, from uh, the Bronx and and. Uh, sleeping on the dining room table so that uh, his family could make money having borders. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I can't imagine him having this, you know, uh, New York accent, but he did. And he, he, he trained himself to be, be the person that you, that you saw in Lost in Space. He, and he started very young. He, be, he was a pharmacist originally. And his father wanted him to, you know, earn a good living. And he finally came home one day and said, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to be an actor. And he, he went on to, of course, a great career. And um, so he was right in doing that. I learned a lot from Jonathan uh, and June and, and, and Guy. They were all the ultimate professionals. And, and, and I was a young person at the time. So I, I learned one good thing from Jonathan is uh, that is that if you write your own, uh, if you write the last line in a scene, they ultimately will end with you on this, in the scene. Not that that's really important, but uh, I guess Jonathan thought he was. And he'd go, oh, the pain, the pain, or whatever it was. And they would have to end with him. And, but he was charming. They were all wonderful. Uh, June and I still see each other. I see uh, Guy Williams' uh, daughter and son. Her, um, his daughter's name is Tony, and his son is Steve. And I mean, they're just charming, wonderful people, just, just like Guy. They have that same kind of eloquence and uh, 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 a certain uh, a class that uh, can only be uh, sort of um, taught in, in many ways. And, and Guy and, and his wife did, did that with these wonderful people. I would like to have seen Mark and myself, Captain, um, uh, we call him Crash West, um, <laughs> get married and perhaps have a child and uh, uh, you know have have maybe a, uh, a spin-off of a <laughs> of our own show yeah. you know it it would have been it we should have had the fourth the fourth year well if there had been a fourth season uh, I would have liked to us go back to closer to what we did in the first season more of a family adventure in space rather than the silliness that we got into with Jonathan and the robot. Yeah. That worked for us, but I don't know if we would have continued in the fourth season to work as well. Yeah. Uh, I would rather have gone more serious, but an adventure, and a good adventure, you know? Yeah. 
Mission Impossible. No. <laughs> and Marta was just in here, and she was saying that she would have liked you guys to be married and have a child, and uh, like a, a spin-off show or something. <laughs> uh, I don't know about a spin-off show, but if we had gone a fourth season, yeah, maybe it would have been nice for us to get together. I think the fans would have liked that. Yeah. I mean, it was me and her, and that's, we were going to colonize the universe, I guess. I yeah. don't know who else was available. <laughs> The Blu-ray set is coming out. Yeah. It's a wonderful set. It's um, it's uh, we, we've got commentary on some of the show, seven of the shows. We do a reading of an old script that Bill wrote 35 years ago. We had so much fun. Veronica Cartwright plays uh, my mother because June couldn't do it because she was ill at the time. She had a that horrible flu, and so she had to cancel. But um, uh, oh, and then Guy Williams' son plays my father. It was sort of weird seeing these two people, but um, who, who were, I think, younger than I. Anyway, it was uh, it was quite quite something, and and it's a good script, and and there's a lot of stuff going on in it, and and I think the fans will really enjoy it. Is there any other surprises? Oh, can you give us a hint about. Well, something about the robot, oh, okay. <laughs> and a love interest for Bill, and. Uh, Mark and myself and family and yeah and Penny so yeah there's there are some surprises nice surprises but I think it'll be all it's all in in good fun it it all it all sort of follows who we are later on 35 years later and uh, or not not 35 I guess we well he wrote it 35 years ago so it's it's about 15 years later so You'll, you'll enjoy it. Well, I, 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 there's, a, there's a big, big surprise in it, but I can't tell you that surprise. Uh, it, just this wonderful stuff. We did seven hours, and we were together in a studio where they put the shows that we, we critis, you know, talked about on the screen, and as it was on the screen, we were having fun talking about it and what was happening on it. That's very good stuff. Uh, and uh, we do read Billy's script that he wrote back in the 80s, and... Uh, and that's that's a that's a good good script. I won't tell you what happens in it, but it's it's a good script. We had fun right doing it. Actually, yeah, it was very well done. We we were at tables and we read the script and we had about eight or nine cameras on everybody at the same time. It was good, very well done by 20th. Blu-ray, the uh, Blu-ray material, bonus material is excellent. That alone is worth buying the uh, the DVD. I think. It'll be great, and the fans are looking forward to it. They'll love it. Yeah. Plus, the stuff is pops out at you. Yeah. You know, the Blu-ray stuff is like boom. You know, yeah. so.